In this lesson, we'll build a basic structure of a case study page to help showcase our work. Along the way, we'll learn how to create frames using frame presets, introduce how to make your designs responsive using constraints, and how to quickly tidy up and rearrange elements using smart selection. A case study is a written showcase of a specific project or piece of work. It highlights the problem, your approach to solve it, and the results you achieved. It also demonstrates skills and expertise to help potential employers or clients understand the value you bring. For inspiration on how to write a case study, you can check out the dozens of case studies on Figma's blog, Shortcut. Since we'll likely have more than one case study in our final portfolio, this will act as a blueprint that we can reuse. We'll want to include these different elements. A hero with bold text and an image background to set the context for the page. A text heading to break the page out into different sections. Paragraph text to describe different aspects of the project and how we contributed to its success. An image that allows us to showcase final assets, illustrate works in progress, or other visuals and resources. And a featured text block, where we can include a quote, insight from a project, or testimonial from a client or collaborator. A quick note before we get started, We'll be focused on setting down the basic structure of our layers and won't be providing exact dimensions for every layer in this lesson. But don't worry, we'll refine those details in later lessons when we start putting together the different pieces of our portfolio. Let's move over to an empty spot on the canvas to give us some space for our case study design. Our case study will be a full page on our website. To help us lay out the page and make sure we're using the correct dimensions, we can use a frame preset. Frame presets are a collection of ready-made frame sizes. They allow you to quickly create frames for popular dimensions so that you don't have to remember or guess what size your frames need to be. When you select the frame tool, you'll find frame presets in the right sidebar for common phone, tablet, and desktop devices. There are also presets for specific asset dimensions like presentations, paper sizes, and social media assets. Some frame presets like device presets will be extra helpful when it comes to prototyping as they allow us to see how our designs look within a real device. We'll focus on a desktop-first experience for our portfolio website, but we can explore how to make it mobile-friendly in the future. Let's create a frame preset. Select the Frame tool, then open the Desktop section in the right sidebar. Select the Desktop Frame Preset to add a new frame to the canvas. People will view our portfolio from a variety of screen sizes, but this is a good starting point. Then we'll rename our new frame to Case Study Exploration. Now we have a defined space to start building the different elements we need. If at any point we run out of space, we can select the frame and click and drag the bottom edge to lengthen it. In a future lesson, we'll touch on how using Auto Layout can save us time from having to manually resize our frames. Let's build out our elements, starting with our heading. Select the text tool and click into the case study frame. Because we click directly into the frame, notice in the layer section how Figma added the text inside of the frame. Type a placeholder text for the heading. Click anywhere on the canvas to stop editing the text content. 
The layer will still be selected, so we can continue styling it. Set the font size to 28, font weight to bold, and line height to 38. Since we're creating lots of layers for our case study page, let's rename this to Section Heading so we can find it in the Layers panel. Next, let's create our paragraph text. Click the canvas or press Escape to deselect the text layer, then select the text tool. Click and drag to create a text box about two-thirds the size of the frame. Then, let's type out a few paragraphs of default text. Notice how Figma remembered the typography properties from the previously created text layer. Let's update the font size to 20, the font weight to medium, and text resizing to auto height. We'll keep the line height at 38. The paragraphs need some separation to make it more readable. Open the Type Settings menu and find Paragraph Spacing, then update the value to 24. Speaking of readability, let's set the width to 1000 to make sure we don't cause reading fatigue by placing too many or too few words on a single line. Lastly, rename this to Paragraph Text. Moving on, We'll need another text layer for our quote block. Select the text tool and draw a text box. We'll make it about the same width as the paragraph text. Type a placeholder for the quote box. Then increase the font size to 24. Emphasize the text using medium italic and update the text resizing to auto height. Keep line height at 38 and paragraph spacing at 24. We'll name this layer quote. We want this quote to stand out more and act as a break between our paragraph text. So let's resize its width to 570 and set its horizontal text alignment to align center. Text alignment determines how text content is distributed within its bounding box. You can set text alignment on the horizontal or vertical axis from the typography section of the right sidebar. For horizontal text alignment, you have options to align the text to the left, center, or right. You can also justify text from type settings. With vertical alignment, you can align text to the top, middle, or bottom of the text layer's bounding box. Moving on to the image, select the rectangle tool from the toolbar or press R and draw a rectangle at any size. To keep the image consistent with the size of our text box, we'll set the width to 1000. The height of our final image may change, but for now, we'll set this to 562, so it's close to the common 16 by 9 aspect ratio. In the Fill section, open the color picker and select Image at the top. The fill changes to a gray and white checkerboard pattern that indicates an image placeholder. Later, we'll be able to double-click on the fill to upload an image from our computer. We'll rename this layer Image. Before we move on to our final element, the hero, let's select all the elements and move them down at least 400 pixels to create some working space for ourselves. You can check how far the layers are from the edge of the frame by pressing the keyboard shortcut for measuring distances. Now let's tackle the hero element. Create a text layer and type a default title. 
We need this to stand out more, so let's increase the font size to 76, the font weight to bold, and line height to auto. When you set line height to auto, Figma will use the default line height set by the font. This means line height may vary per font. We'll also set the text alignment to align center. Lastly, let's center the text on the frame. Go to the position section of the right sidebar and select align horizontal centers. We can also drag the text layer until we see a red line appear in the center, which indicates that it's in the center of the frame. Moving along to the background of our hero, we could create a rectangle shape with an image fill, then place it in a frame along with our title text. However, we eventually want the hero to live in a frame to keep things organized and to use Figma features like auto layout. So let's skip the rectangle and use a frame with an image fill instead. In the previous lesson, we learned how to draw a frame around existing layers by clicking and dragging with the frame tool. This time, let's try adding a frame in a different way. Select the title text, then right click and choose frame selection. The text layer just got placed in a new frame Let's add an image fill to the frame. Then make the frame bigger by clicking and dragging the left and right sides of the new frame's bounding box. Resize until the side snaps to the parent frame, indicated by the red X. To do this, you'll need to have Snap to Objects toggled on in your file preferences. Then set the height of the frame to 440 Whoa! When we resized the frame, the title text stayed anchored to the top, but we want it to anchor to the center. Let's use constraints to do this. Constraints are used on child layers to determine how they respond when their parent frame is resized. This is especially useful when designing across different devices to make sure designs respond and adapt to different screens. You can use it to make sure a sidebar always spans the height of an interface, or a button always stays anchored to the bottom right of the screen. Constraints can be applied to any child layer as long as its parent frame doesn't have auto layout applied. When you select a child layer, you can find its constraint settings in the position section of the right sidebar. Here you'll find horizontal and vertical constraints. By default, constraints are set to top and left, which means the layer will stay in the same position relative to the top left corner of its parent frame when we resize the parent. You'll see this reflected by the blue dotted lines on the canvas. As an example, Say we have a card asset with a label at the bottom that uses the default constraint settings. This means when we resize the card, the label will anchor to the top and remain the same size. However, we want it to anchor to the bottom and stretch to fit the width of the card. So let's change the label's horizontal constraints to left and right and vertical constraints to bottom. Now when we resize the card, the label responds the way we want. If you can't see the constraint settings, make sure you've selected a child layer. Top level frames and layers sitting directly on the canvas cannot have constraint settings since they do not have a parent frame to anchor constraints to. Also, make sure the child layer isn't in a frame with auto layout applied. We want the text layer to stay centered when its parent frame resizes. So let's select the text layer to change its constraint settings to center and center. Then let's click align horizontal center and align vertical center to center the text in the frame. 
Now when we resize the frame, the text layer will stay centered. Now that we have all of our elements, let's tidy things up a titch. First, rename the hero element Impactful Text. Then change the text resizing of the section heading to Auto Height and set its width to 1000 to match our paragraph text. Now let's center everything horizontally. Select the top level frame and press Enter to select all the elements inside the frame. Press Align Horizontal Centers to center the elements to one another. Now open the More Actions menu in the Position section of the right sidebar and select Distribute Vertical Spacing. This distributes our elements evenly apart on the vertical axis, which allows us to use Smart Selection to quickly rearrange our elements. When a selection of objects are spaced evenly apart on both the horizontal and vertical axes, you get access to Smart Selection. Smart Selection lets you quickly rearrange and adjust spacing between two or more layers in a selection without having to go through the tedious task of adjusting it manually. You'll know when Smart Selection is available if you hover over the selected elements and you see pink circles and pink handles. If you don't see them, try using Tidy Up in the position section of the right sidebar to make sure objects are evenly distributed on the vertical and horizontal axes. Click and drag the pink circles to rearrange the objects while maintaining the flow and layout. Select a pink circle and use the keyboard shortcut to duplicate the object and add it to the Smart Selection flow. You can even hold Shift to select multiple layers so you can duplicate and move objects even faster. Hover over the pink handles to see the space between objects. Then click and drag the pink handles to increase or decrease the space between. You can also use the Space Between fields in the Layout section of the right sidebar to enter in a value. Smart Selection can be a great tool to help you experiment with different layouts throughout the early phases of the design process. Feel free to play around with Smart Selection using the elements on the case study page, but don't stress too much about perfecting the spacing and layout. We'll revisit these elements in an upcoming lesson when we learn about auto layout. We just laid out the elements we need to detail our case studies. We started with a desktop sized frame preset, which was used to build our text layers, image block, and hero elements. Along the way, we discovered a new way to add a frame using frame selection and that constraints impact how child layers respond to the resizing of their parent container. Lastly, we tidied our layers up and used Smart Selection to rearrange and adjust spacing. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to build a responsive button element using Auto Layout and turn it into a component that we can reuse throughout our designs. We'll see you there.